In this video, I'll walk you through what I've been working on in the past sprint. Specifically, I've been working on integrating one of the newest ELS components, TIM, into Conductor. TIM is a new image management engine. It sits between Conductor and Image Factory and provides metadata storage to replace Image Warehouse. TIM also brings about support for what will soon be released as Image Factory 2.0. In addition to other new features and enhancements, Image Factory 2.0 will support building and pushing images for OpenStack. Since Delta Cloud already supports OpenStack, this allows us to finally add OpenStack support to Conductor. In this video, I'll give a quick walkthrough of this functionality as it exists today. I should note that I'm working from a local branch of the code. This work hasn't been committed to master yet and still has some rough edges. Plus, it needs more robust testing. To start with, let's add a provider. This is done the same way as with other providers. We can assign a descriptive name for our own use. In this case, I'll choose OpenStack. Next, we set the Delta Cloud URL. Here, we're going with the default of localhost. Next, we set the provider type to OpenStack. And you'll note that we get a new field here, OpenStack API Entry Point. This points to the Keystone Identity Services URL. This is the entry point that Delta Cloud will use. You'll note by default this is going to be port 5000. I'll select that and create the provider. And it's added. Next, let's add an account. This too is done just the same way. And here you'll see what I mean about this being a little rough around the edges still. The label field at the beginning is as we would expect, just a descriptive label. Username, though, is a little bit special. Because OpenStack requires a tenant name and a username, Delta Cloud has us join these two fields with a plus sign. Currently, we're just passing this data through to Delta Cloud literally, so we have to do the same thing with our username, plus sign, the tenant name. In this case, mine is M.A. Wagner for both username and tenant name. Ideally, I'd like to split these out into two separate fields. And here's what I mean about this work still being a little rough around the edges. The glance URL, as you'll notice, is a very large text box for no apparent reason. <laughs> this is just a styling bug. For those of you who don't know OpenStack too well, the glance URL refers to the image service within glance, and this is where Image Factory will push the images it builds. So in this case, let me just enter the one that I've been using for testing. Just an internal box here. 9292. Port 9292 seems to be the default for Glance. It bears mentioning that the Glance URL can often but not always be detected over the Keystone URL that is provided when adding a provider. Unfortunately, it's not always a one to one association. So right now, we're not able to automatically detect this data. Next, we'll set the number of maximum running instances. The default of unlimited is good. Similarly, we'll take the default priority here. We create this, and now our provider account has been added. Next, let's build an image. This is done just the same way as building images for other providers, of course. Quick environments. And here in our default environment, we'll build a new image. Give it a descriptive name. OpenStack test sounds good. Which is an image template file. Here's just a basic XML file I already have. And I'll edit it so you can see the contents. But it's nothing out of the ordinary. Just a Fedora 17 image. Pulled from an uh, internal mirror. Oops, let's actually fix that. We're using a not very secure default password, but this is just an internal test. So we'll go with that. Save and continue. Save the template. Okay, and here's the next bit where we're still a little bit rough around the edges. The build all button is kind of floating over here. We're supposed to show a list of all of the provider types you can build for. Uh, there's a bug right now that keeps that from showing until you've actually built. That will be fixed soon, don't worry. So we click build all. Okay, and now here's our list. This is going to take some time. So while we're waiting, I, I want to give a brief mention of how this works. It's changed a little bit since we integrated Tim. 
It's now all over a REST API. We send a call to Image Factory to build the image. And then we'll now receive an HTTP callback, letting us know that the image build is complete. Now this page, as it has done for a while, uses Backbone to keep the status in sync. So once we receive that callback, we'll see this change from building to complete. Now I'll skip ahead a little bit so you don't have to sit here and wait. Okay, well as you can see, the image has just completed building. Now the uh, status has been replaced with a delete, um, delete link because it's done. Over here you'll see we now have the option to go ahead and push it to the provider. Uh, this we might want to eventually make automatic, but right now it's still a manual process. Go ahead and press push. Alright, now that I've gone ahead and pushed, we've probably got another little bit of a wait ahead of us. Uh, it, it's got to push the image, in this case it's a 10 gig VM image, up over the network to the remote provider. The provider's got to persist it to disk. Then Image Factory will send us a callback that it's complete. So if you want to cheat here, I've got the image up in the uh, OpenStack dashboard here on the machine I'm working on. If we refresh, see the status is still saving, so the image is not completely pushed yet. It's a 10 gig image, so I guess we've got a little bit of a wait. Alright, so I've been sitting here telling the log for a while, and it looks like there's some sort of network issue I'm getting very low bandwidth. So rather than sit and wait for an hour, I'm just going to let this go. I'm going to cheat a little bit and show importing an image, and then we'll go ahead and launch the imported image. I've tested it both ways. It does work to uh, launch what we're building, but I don't really have the time for that. So here I've pulled up another image. It's just an uh, internal RHEL 6.3 image. You can see it's been around for a little bit. So here we're going to take the UID. We'll just copy and paste that. Come back to environments here. We'll give it a name. It was rel 63 there. We'll keep that. Click continue. Now here, since we're just importing our reference to the image, this should be relatively quick. In fact, it shouldn't be taking this long. Don't know what it's doing. Okay. Complete. Here we're seeing the imported image. So now we're going to go ahead and launch this. New deployable from image. Oop. Okay. Take a little detour and create a hardware profile. Thought we already had one. So since I'm working from source, I didn't do the usual EOS configure. And I guess I missed setting up a default hardware profile. Let's set something really small. 32 mega RAM, one CPU. Don't worry about storage. But we want x86. Save. Check, just make sure it matches. Okay, so we come back here to our image. Go back to building a deployable. Default hardware profile, stick in the default catalog. Save. And let's go ahead and launch. Here we'll take all the defaults on this page. Click next. And launch. You know, state new. This is going to, uh, wait a minute, we're going to get put in the background. And we'll have a queue come along and push it short. Uh, since I'm doing everything from source, I'm going to start delay job over here with rake jobs work. Okay, launch request has been sent. Which means if we come back over here, it should show up any second. Status build, spawning. Come back over here, and now we're in pending state. Go ahead and start DBomatic. Okay, and you'll note the IP here is the 192.168 IP. So this is considered an internal IP. And that's a little confusing since we're on an internal network. But if you think of this as a remote provider, this isn't meant to be accessible to us. So we got to come over here and attach. So we've got a floating IP. We need to attach this floating IP, which we're going to think of as a public IP. We're going to associate that IP with our instance. This currently can't be done through conductor. Uh, might be nice. It's an eventual add-on. It's now added. If we come back here to our overview, choose that. 
instances. Okay, so we now show our 192.168 IP, which is sort of something inaccessible to us on this 10 dot network. But then this IP we can get to. So if I jump over here, let me pull up a little terminal. All right. So Murphy's Law always seems to kick in with demos. And for some reason on my development environment, uh, DBOmatic is crashing with a segmentation fault in Nokoguri. So we're going to cheat, come over here, we'll see. Status is now active, it's actually running without DBOmatic running. It doesn't know that it's moved on to pending. We're going to go ahead and download the key. Saved locally. Now the one thing we need to remember when we download a key is that SSH will complain that the permissions are too open if we try to use it as is. So we're going to chmod 600 it. SSH dash I uh, that root at RIP. Oops, that's in the background and I can't copy and paste. 10, 16, 16, 23. Wait a minute. And wait some more, and we're in. All right, well, that about wraps up what I wanted to show you. In conclusion, we've uh, shown using Tim to add a provider and provider account on OpenStack, build an image, push the image, still waiting on that pushed image to complete, by the way, but it does work just not in a demo. We've imported an image, launched that imported image, and then proceeded to SSH into it. All right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned to the ALS project. Hopefully we'll have more good stuff for you soon.